landscape and nature photographers, if you guys are using this editing technique, you've got to stop using it for better photos. In today's video, we're gonna talk about what this technique is, how to avoid it, and why some people might wanna use it, but I think that you should not. Hello everybody, my name's Austin James Jackson. I'm a professional landscape photographer based here in Southern Utah, and in today's video, we are talking about why you guys need to avoid using HDR or high dynamic range in landscape photography. Now, if you're new to landscape photography, maybe this is a term that you've heard before, but you haven't quite used it. And if you've been shooting a long time, maybe this is something that you're using all the time. What HDR is, is it's high dynamic range. And this means that your photo has a very high dynamic range between the highlights and the shadows. Generally, when people talk about this, they talk about the high dynamic range of their camera. So generally speaking, the nicer sensor you have in the camera, the more high dynamic range you get. Meaning, when you're shooting in RAW, you're able to capture those brightest highlights and those darkest shadows a little bit better and be able to bring up the shadows and bring down the highlights to kind of neutralize the photo. If you've been shooting long, you probably know that if you're shooting into like the direct sun, your foreground is gonna be underexposed, your sky is gonna be overexposed. So high dynamic range, uh, basically means that you are getting both of these properly or a little more properly exposed. Now, you may be thinking, why wouldn't I wanna use that? Of course I want the sky to be properly exposed. Of course I want the foreground to be properly exposed. I wanna tell you guys why you would not. So generally speaking in photography, it's looked down upon to have your highlights blown out or your shadows totally dark. Um, but I wanna tell you guys why I think that it's not a huge problem. So if you want your photos to look realistic, you're gonna need something to be really bright and something to be really dark in your scene. Traditionally, the way the high dynamic range was performed was by doing bracketing in the field. Now what this means is that you are either setting your camera or manually changing the settings yourself and you are taking like three, five, seven, nine, however many photos you want of the scene in front of you at different exposure values, meaning that you're gonna have some faster exposures, some slower exposures, and the reason is because you're trying to get a photo where you can expose for the sky, expose for the foreground, expose for the midground, whatever. You need to expose for all of the different brightnesses. Then you would go in uh, either in Lightroom or Photoshop or another post-processing software or plugin, and you would throw all those photos in there and it would put them all together and it would give you the perfectly exposed image. Now this sounds great, but the problem is it looks terribly unrealistic uh, when you have your shadows that are like the same brightness as the sky. It doesn't look right. And maybe in technically speaking in photography, it's better when you have everything properly exposed. But to me, I prefer to create a little bit more realistic looking image where my shadows are dark and my highlights are bright. That's why I think that you guys should avoid using HDR. Now with the increase in camera sensor technology, people have also been able to create like an HDR look to their photos by just increasing the shadows and decreasing the highlights. I'll show you guys that here in a couple minutes. Um, and this is also something I think that you should avoid. So in this video, I just wanna talk a little bit about uh, how I edit my photos so that I can keep um, something super dark, something super bright. Now, of course, this only applies to those photos that are HDR-able um, per se, those photos where you've got something that is really bright and you've got something that's really dark. Usually this is gonna be at sunset or sunrise or you're shooting into the sun or something like that. If you're shooting a photo under totally flat light, this probably isn't going to apply to you very much, um, but I know a lot of us landscape photographers are out there capturing sunsets and sunrises where people are doing HDRs and it just does not look realistic. I'm telling you guys, trust me here. Let's go ahead and jump right in there. I'm gonna jump into Lightroom and I'm gonna show you guys a few mistakes that people make when they start editing. Um, and then I'm gonna show you guys some of my photos that I definitely could have HDR that I didn't. You can look at them, see what you think, of course, this is just my opinion that you should stop using HDR. Um, so look at it, see what you think. If you disagree with me, let me know in the comments. If you agree with me, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know um, what you guys think about using HDR. I just personally think that it makes your photos not look very nice. So a traditional HDR sequence would look something like this. So I've got, um, just for example here, I've got my darkest photo here where I've exposed for the sun, and then I have slowly brightened the exposure in order to expose for the rock. Now you would be able to easily select all of these, uh, just like that, you would be able to go down to HDR, uh, it's under photo, uh, photo merge HDR, you would click that and it would load your HDR preview. 
Now this technology works pretty well, but what you'll notice is that there's a little bit of ghosting and you do have the de-ghost amount here in Lightroom where you can actually get rid of some of that ghosting. Um, but I still just think it's better to get your photo in maybe one shot if you can. If you've got a camera with a little bit worse sensor, you might still need to do this bracketing technique, but the way that you edit your photo, you can make it look like it's not an HDR photo. I'm gonna show you guys in just a second what that looks like. So we basically have this image here that it's going to spit out where it has everything in a little bit better um, exposure. What I don't like about this is you're starting from such a difficult place. This is not a good photo to start with because the sky and the foreground are basically the same brightness. It doesn't look realistic at all. Let me show you guys another example. So here's a photo that I shot in Nevada uh, in the last couple years here. And you can see this is about as much dynamic range as you're ever gonna get in a scene. I'm shooting directly into the sun and I'm shooting this rock, which is being backlit. So this front is all into shadow. Now, the I wanna show you guys how I originally edited this when I was gonna open this up. So with my editing workflow, I edit here in Lightroom. Um, I just do some sliders, then I open it in Photoshop, do all my editing there, and then that's where I finish my final edit. But I always like to start in Lightroom by giving myself a good base to work with. So this is what I had to work with after I did a few sliders here in Lightroom. So you can see I've just barely increased the brightness of the foreground here. Now the mistake that a lot of photographers would make when they're trying to give their photos this like HDR look or to make it so that it's more in detail is they would take this sliders slider, bring it all the way down, shadows all the way up, whites all the way down, and blacks all the way up. Basically what this does is it just maximizes your dynamic range essentially, but you can see when you drop the shadows, this is the main problem you have. This area right here is blown out. Now in landscape photography, generally people are gonna say, you don't blow anything out, nothing can be blown out. In my opinion, when it's something small like this, it's totally fine to be blown out. Uh, and the reason is because, I will show you guys my final photo right here, I can add some nice glow around that. Now the way that you avoid that looking really ugly, like this, is that you can't drop the highlights so far. So only drop the highlights as far as about right there. You can see now it's glowing around, even though it's obvious that it's blown out, it's not like really this ugly white color. We still have some glow around it. So that's the furthest that I ever want to bring anything down, especially when there's sun. Now the shadows, I'm essentially just bringing this up a hair. I could bring it up all the way like that, but now I've given my photo this HDR look. Look at what I've done when I slide these like this. This is a common mistake that people will make. Looking at this now, a lot of people would say that the scene is more properly exposed. You can see more details, more details equals better. In my opinion, that is incorrect. More details is not always better. I wanna create a little bit more realistic looking image, which is why I like keeping things a little bit darker. Ultimately, the final image came out like this. Again, if I had that HDR look, my photo would look something more like this. Again, we do not want that foreground to be brighter or the same brightness as the sky. It should be a lot darker, especially when something is backlit. This rock should be nice and dark. It's honestly maybe even a little bit too bright. Uh, I could probably bring this down and have it look a little bit more realistic, but I did want a little bit of detail in that rock. But trust me guys, your photo is going to look so much more realistic if you don't just jack up the shadows and jack down the highlights. It's not going to look good. Avoid doing this, avoid this HDR technique, even though maybe this isn't like using an HDR software, doing this to one photo essentially has the same technique. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me today. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Like I said, I really, really don't recommend using HDR, but it is totally up to you. I think in really small amounts, this can work all right. If you've got an older camera where the sensor doesn't capture as much dynamic range, you can use this to kind of bring your photos back to somewhere more realistic but generally speaking I would say probably 95% of photographers using HDR software to combine their photos or even doing it themselves uh, it just doesn't look realistic it doesn't look good um, and people can see that and they wonder kind of how your photo looks the way that it does so trust me guys ditch the HDR just create a few sliders, but keep that natural contrast in your scene. Keep those shadows dark, keep those highlights light, and I think you'll be much, much happier with the result. Thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. As always, please make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment. I love to hear from you guys, and we will see you guys next weekend. Thank you guys so much. Bye-bye.